Hello and happy Thursday. It's time once again for the iHomeschool Network, iHomeschool Hangout. I'm your host and moderator, Diana Kennedy. When I'm not representing the iHomeschool Network, you'll find me at the Kennedy Adventures, I'm sharing my resources for Catholic homeschooling, managing a large family, and uh, talking about our misadventures in homeschooling. Um, today, we're here once again, like I said, every Thursday. You'll find us here at 2 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Central, 12 Mountain, I'm sorry, 12, what is that, Mountain Time, and 11 a.m. for our folks on the Pacific Coast. You can also follow us on YouTube, and for those of you who are podcast fans like me, you can also find us on um, iTunes and Stitcher for Android, Android users. <clears throat> We're here every Thursday talking about topics that are relevant to homeschooling moms and homeschooling families. Today we're going to be talking about teaching with technology. So this is fun as a gadget girl. This is going to be a fun topic for me to for me to work with today. And I'll, I'll go ahead and introduce our panel guest to you, Heather. We're going to start with you. Hi, I'm Heather Woody, and I blog at uh, blogshewrote.org, and I'm here to share how we use technology in our homeschool. We have four kids, ranging in age from high school to elementary school. Thanks for joining us today. Jimmy? Hey everybody, I'm Jimmy Landley and my main homeschool blog is at jimmyscollage.com and I'm here providing some support. I'm going to be bringing in comments from the event page and from YouTube so if you're watching with us live thank you for leaving your comments and hopefully we'll be able to get to some of those and your questions. Excellent. Jimmy's part of my part of my production team today. Marlene. Hey guys, I'm excited to join you today as a panelist and I blog over at indulgentheart.com. Uh, homeschooling, family, faith, marriage, kids, a little bit of everything. And I look forward to talking to you guys today about how we teach with technology in our homeschool. Excellent. You guys that are frequent viewers see see Marlene here with me each and every week. Sade? Hi everyone, I'm Shade Tagbo and I have homeschooled for about six years now. Um, I have two biological kids, three foster children and three pre-adoptive children in the home right now. We use technology a whole lot <laughs> in our homeschool. Um, my blog is at ShadeTagbo.com. I'm glad to be here today. Thank you. I want to encourage everybody that's watching over on the live event page um, to go ahead and circle these girls. Um, we are all pretty active on Google Plus and share a lot of what we write on our blogs as well as things that we pull in. Um, so you'll get a lot of great things in your stream if you follow these ladies. So we're going to get started. Like Jimmy reminded us, if you guys got, have got questions or comments or things to share, Stick them over, the, over on the event page on G+, and then we will get to them kind of as we have time during the Hangout. But um, we're going to start off kind of broad um, with this, and we're just going to talk about how we can use technology to enrich our homeschool. We've got a whole lot of options, um, so we're going to just going to throw that net out wide and then um, grab some ideas from these girls, and then also um, see your thoughts over on the event page, too. Um, Heather, do you want to start off with that one? Sure. So we use homes, we use technology in our homeschool a whole lot. We have uh, new to us our tablets actually, but we use technology um, to program and work with robots, and not so not just um, doing academic work, but also um, all kinds of things that you can think of: engineering, programming, whatever it might be. That's an excellent share. I was thinking like I'm thinking apps, you know, for learn for I'm thinking apps for phonics and Heather just like blows me out of the water with building building robots. That's <laughs> awesome. All right. Marlene, what about you or Sade? Um, we use um computers, we use Netflix, um Amazon, we use that through actually our PlayStation. Um we also use it through our smart TV too, so it just we have those two options, which is super fun. 
Uh, we kind of try to limit the actual computer desktop time, so if anything, we can do it on through the PlayStation or through the TV. We try to do it that way because we can even get YouTube on there, which we use a lot for like educational tutorial videos. Um, we have tablets, but we don't really use them at the time for actually educational purposes. My kids use them to read, but not um, much beyond that at this point because I'm kind of... I don't know, I don't really like getting my kids' tablets, so I kind of just limit it to other things at the time. Excellent. Sade, what about you? Um, well, technology is huge in our homeschool. I mean, I think um, when I'm a slacker mom, the times when <laughs> I've just kind of thrown my hands up in the air and not done what I was supposed to do as a teacher, technology has really saved the day in many ways. So I'm going to start sharing a few things and just tell me to stop when you want me to <laughs> so I don't hog the whole hangout. Um, so we, my husband works with computers. He's in IT and he was he, super excited to buy our children computers. So they got their first desktop, individual desktop computers when they were I think four and three. And so they have always worked with computers. But what we committed to doing was to keep it educational. So it was always educational games. We used the, um, the early Jumpstart CDs that teach phonics, you know, back about seven years ago when you bought your computer game on the CD and put it in there. And so they had those and they practiced phonics and little critical thinking things on there. And we have just grown with technology through the years. We've done so much with it. When my son struggled with writing, you know, some children just have those fine motor skills are a problem. And so when it came to oh, write an essay or do a composition, on top of having the spelling and the writing and the sitting down and everything for my, you know, six or seven year old boy, it was just not something he wanted to do. And so he, the only way he would compose a story was when he, had, he was able to type it out on the computer. Whenever I said, okay, write me a story, if he could type it out on the computer, he didn't have a problem with it. But if he had to write it, then he'd have a, he'd have a problem. So we, they learned to type um, really early. They, now they, got, they both got Kindle Fires for Christmas last year. And so now they're learning Korean, which that, that came out of having <laughs> Netflix. So we started watching these Korean uh, TV dramas, which are, they're, they're really cute. <laughs> over the holidays. So he started out watching these really cute Korean dramas and then we were like, well, we want to know what they're saying. So let's, you know, see if we can figure out some of the words. So we started looking up Korean vocabulary and then we started looking up Korean language apps and they started learning the Korean language. And within a week, my daughter could, from using apps, she could write out sounds because it's a very phonetic language like English. And she could write out sounds in some of the symbols and I'm learning because they're coming to me with these apps and we're flipping through them and I'm learning at the same time. We have just done so much. We've done, we have Netflix. The National Geographic items on Netflix are amazing. Uh, the, there's a Lewis and Clark documentary and that was our entire Lewis and Clark thing. I mean, it was just, it was amazing. We just sat down, we watched it. It was about three hours long and it just caught fire. We wanted to know everything about Lewis and Clark. When we did World War II, we looked at some World War II documentaries on there, and there were some excellent ones. And they really uh, picked out some heroes for themselves from the people that we saw on uh, Netflix watching uh, videos. So we've done a lot. Uh, computers, Netflix, YouTube. We have a smart TV as well where we stream YouTube. So I'll just go ahead and... <laughs> stop there but it's huge we love I love I can just turn something on I like to collect what what's rich on there which we, we stay away from just entertainment and because of that we're just able to do a lot of I don't know, enrichment I guess is the word with technology Excellent. I know that we use um, two two things in the mind for us with Netflix. We have a um, we don't have cable, and we have an Apple TV that we stream um, Netflix and oh, uh, Netflix and Hulu and YouTube. I'll go to the Apple TV. We also have a Wii that we can do that too, but it works better with the Apple TV. Um, but I I'm actually I'm actually on the Netflix stream team. It's like a team of bloggers that write about Netflix. Uh, which is easy for me because we use it each and every single day. Um, but what I would absolutely love...
for Netflix. Um, how, like I would, I would like individual, not not individual playlists because I have it set up now where you can like ours as viewers. You know, Brett, Diana, the kids. That's how he, that's how we have it set up. But I'd almost like um, even individual playlists, like kind of inside that. Like I'd like to be able to organize it, like for the kids, science videos. Or dinosaur videos, or here's our history stuff over here, because that's what I've done with YouTube. I've created playlists in YouTube too to kind of gather preschool songs, holiday finger plays, because my kids love that kind of stuff, and I forget it. Like it goes in one ear, right out the other, and if I don't have like a reference, you know, for that kind of stuff, then I forget. And they're trying to tell me how to sing this song about a baker. And I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. But if I save it, then I can go back to it later. But that's what I would like to do, be able to do in Netflix, just just to personalize the list a little bit more, or to have things come up, or have, be able to block things that come up. Like, okay, not interested in that. I don't ever want to see that again. So you know what I'm saying? Like that 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 that's the frustration that I get that I get with Netflix is like there's like too much there. And it's sensory overload. We let the kids kind of watch it. Not alone, but you know they have their play. They know how to access it. They know how they have their playlists, and they go in. But there are things that I would like to block, like you know some of the Cartoon Network stuff. I don't ever want to see on the Netflix panel ever again. <laughs> but I can't, I don't know how to. There's no way to block that kind of stuff. So that that would be my on my wish list for Amazon. Um, not Amazon on, for Netflix. So we've talked about kind of. And then let's kind of delve, I want to kind of delve into each of those things, kind of how we use things. And I know because because of our age ranges of our kids, we are all going to do things a little bit differently. Heather's children are a little bit older, I think. Let's just, let's go with the whole streaming video thing for a little bit first, and then we'll kind of jump around to other stuff. Heather, do you use Netflix or Hulu or Amazon Prime? Well, we have Netflix. Mostly, um, we've used it for entertainment. We do have Dish Network, so we uh, use our DVR to record a lot of things. And I have recently just purchased the Sling Box for Dish Network, which means I can stream video from my DVR anywhere, which is really fun. So on any device, anywhere, I am. So if um, we've recorded a lot of shows on our DVR ahead of time, we can use those um, on a, any of the portable devices that we have. Um, so I guess that's a little smart TV-ish, but we can um, just use it anywhere. Uh, so we um, do we use a lot of that? To be honest, no. We don't stream a lot of videos, but we do have it, and we do use it when it's appropriate. Um, we have some ways. My kids are all about YouTube. If they can find something that um, pertains to what they're trying to figure out, they they will use that. And I don't know when you you tell me when you'd like to hear about how we how we monitor that. Not totally security wise, but time wise. And if there's um, like I have a 15 year old who would be on the computer all the time. Um, streaming whatever, doing whatever he wants to do, and so we um, have a have a unique way of making sure that our kids aren't on their portable devices late into the evening after we've gone to bed and things like that. So, um, no, you go ahead and run with that because um, I'll, I'll I'll throw my two cents in there because that that was an issue for us in the past when my oldest daughter lived still lived at home, and I can say that now because she's moved out. Um, Yes, absolutely. Like I would admit, and this was back in the day, I, I we only had an iPod Touch, you know. And I'm like, one day it's missing, it's missing. I'm like, I don't know where, where is this thing? It's gone, you know. Found it in her room the next day, and of course, what she'd been doing, she'd been on the computer, you know, the computer. She'd right. been on the, she'd been on the iPod all night long, playing right. on Facebook or whatever she was doing, you know, whatever she. So. Was doing. So, yeah, yeah, we I'm have. Like, love to hear it. We have uh, two desktops for our kids. We have a laptop uh, for our children, and then each of them has a Kindle Fire. And two of them, our oldest, have a little um, Gal Samsung Galaxy player, which is uh, we're not iThing people, so that's the equivalent of an iPod Touch in the Android world. 
And so my husband has to manage all these devices and what's he going to do? And he uses our router to do that. And so he turns our Wi-Fi off to our kids' devices um, between certain hours. My oldest also gets up really early. And so um, he'll be up at 6. He keeps old man hours, I always like to say, because he's in bed early and he's up early. He's 15. And um, he, uh, we didn't want him on there unfettered um, before a lot of other people were up and around. So we just turned the devices off between 9 p.m. and 8.30 a.m. And that just means that people are around. I can also target websites I know he's prone to go to, like his favorite um, forum for homeschoolers, and make sure that during school hours he's not sneaking off there. Um, but just by saying, no, computer, you may not dial out to that <laughs> from that device. So that's kind of how we do that. Um, uh, besides, you know, having a, a network filter, too. So um, it's not perfect, but it makes us feel a little bit better. But that's how we manage, at least, Internet time. Now, is that something that you, okay, like, is that something that everybody can do? Or yes. is that something that you well, all did just because he's a fancy IT guy and, you know He's I mean? an engineer, so, yeah, he'll figure it out. Um, but it, you have to have the router that's smart enough to do that. But um, and it's not trivial, but yes, other people can do that too. Thank you. That I think that's incredibly helpful because I'm 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 sure that I'm not the only person that has struggled with the ideas of screen time, and that we're gonna we'll hear. I'll kind of share some of, some of the ways that we that we deal with screen time, and then I'll ask Marlene and, and Chade too. Jimmy's got something from the event panel. I'm sorry, from the event room that she wants to bring in too that we'll address. Yeah, Kelly Cook has a question for you, Diana. She says, I use a Roku to stream Netflix, and I can't see how to change which profile is shown. Do you have a tutorial on your blog somewhere? I don't have a tutorial. Or, um, I don't know. That might be something. I know that you have to set up the Netflix um, profiles, I think, on a desktop. I think. And then I think once you set the profiles up there, then you should be able to access it from your from the device. Like I remember setting it up on the desktop, and then now when I pull it up on the iPad or on the Apple TV or um, on a laptop, or my husband has a like a big Android kind of phablet thing. It was like it's like a big phone, but not quite a tablet, but it's huge. He has one. It's like an LG thing. Um, I know he can. He can pull. He pulls it up there too. So I think once you do it, like I said, on the like kind of in your main Netflix account, like on a desktop, I think it will revert. Try that and see. Otherwise, we'll we'll chit chat about it. I'll see if I can figure figure something out. Catherine Parker asks, says to Heather, our house keeps the Wi-Fi unplugged at night also, and Laura has a similar comment that she says about Netflix, she doesn't want her kids to turn off the Magic School Bus and watch Lego episodes instead, so just keeping that control. And then something totally different, um, Thalia, I'm not sure if I'm saying your name right there, but we, I know who you are and I appreciate you being out there. She has the idea of letting her kids blog on her blog, so that's using technology in her homeschool, I guess, for writing, and it looks like science. Um, her kids are doing a creature feature and an art series on her blog, so that's a great idea of implementing technology. I think I saw um, Cindy West or somebody, I'm not, I may be pulling out the wrong name, someone shared over on the event page that their children also do some of that, um, blog, uh, or somebody called it e e-notebooking, I believe. So if you want to check the event page, there's some things going on there. And then I'll give a plug for IHN. We're going to be doing um, a link up later on this spring, I think May, where we're going to turn our digital cameras and video cameras over to our kids and let them do like a day in the life of homeschoolers. So there's another way that we were that we'll use technology. So you have to keep your eyes peeled for that because that should be um, interesting to say the least. All right, Marlene or Sade, do you guys have tips or tricks that do you all use for screen to like to manage screen time? Um, with us, really, our our kids are just told um, they they can get their screen time. They can go on and do whatever they're doing. Um, 
which typically, I guess, the way we manage it best is they go on there with a purpose. It's not just to kind of hang out, um, like on Netflix or anything like that. We have our time where we do do that. But when it's for educational purposes, we're like, okay, we're going to sit down and watch this. When that's over, we'll sit down and discuss it. And they've been pretty good with it, so I haven't really had to be restrictive of blocking anything of the sort. I mean, my oldest is 11, so maybe I'll encounter that sometime soon, but for right now, no, and I'm happy for that. Um, so far, we haven't had a lot of trouble either with the kids moving off to see things. Um, my kids, were when they were younger, they were pretty sensitive. So things freak them out a lot. If there was a jack-o'-lantern in a show, oh my god, mom! You know, so <laughs> I'm actually a little more liberal in what I will allow them to see than in what they're willing to see. So that's helpful. And like um, Marlene, my oldest is 12 now, so we'll see what happens in this tween teen transition. Um, we do have their laptops and their desktop computers have always been in the living room with the screen facing the main area. So the adult in the room is always able to see um, what's going on on the, on the laptop or on the desktop. Um, on Netflix, we don't, we've never had cable. We never watched a lot of TV. So they don't like a lot of TV. The older kids, now the younger kids love television. <laughs> but the older children don't really want to watch a lot of television. So they tend to go there okay, I want to watch this because of this, or we're all sitting down together to watch a show or a movie, and that has kept that kind of under wraps. Now that they have Kindle fires, I have to admit they have been taking them to bed, and we don't have our Wi-Fi turned in at night, so I'm like, whoa, do you really know what your children are doing <laughs> when they're taking their Kindles up to bed? So that's something that I appreciate you ladies sharing. I'm going to have to think, okay, they can do other things in bed <laughs> now that they're able to take this tablet up with them versus when I could see everything they were doing on the on the laptop. I do know that one time my son um, he he created a Facebook account and so he's the eleven year old. He created it I don't it was he didn't put any he put a fake name on there. He didn't do anything on there. I don't even really know why he created it. I was using his laptop because mine wasn't working and I saw it and he had created it maybe six months before and never went back on there. So yes, children will go out and explore things, so we, we need to be careful. Absolutely. And like I said, I think I, I, get, I did, did I give a plug? We're, we're going to be talking about kids and social media and internet safety a little bit later this spring. I think we have it slated for May, I believe. Um, so yeah, keep your eyes peeled because we'll be um, gathering some expert advice from people and kind of how we do things and how to navigate navigate those waters because that's something that's new new to us as parents. We don't, I mean, that's that wasn't an issue when we were all young. So, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a new it's a new area to navigate. Um, and I think Jimmy's got a question question for all of us too. Yeah, Julia Dumas Wilkes says, I'm curious what your favorite education YouTube channels are. We love Crash Course and Mr. Zoller. Thanks for sharing those two with us, uh, Julia, and I'm sure the others have some suggestions. I absolutely I will give a big giant plug for Steve Spangler Science because my kids will sit there and watch these. It has It's quiet music, so it doesn't like give me a headache. Um, you know, like, but the kids will sit there and watch it. They do. They'll do science experiments, and like you don't see like a person's face. It's kind of like like the stuff's all set up there, and so you just see kind of hands moving things. But like, you know, they make fake blood and they make balloons explode, and some of the things are on fire. I mean, my kids just like eat it up. So that's that's one of my very favorites. And then I'll tell. Um, I think all of us have YouTube channels. And I know I've got a bunch of I've got a lot of my favorite playlists saved, so that's that's I, my I kind of have a conglomerate of lots of um, different subscriptions. You I think you can look at somebody's YouTube profile and see what channels they they've subscribed to. So if you check out some of us, we may have something saved. Heather or Marlene or Sade, do you guys have some favorites that you want to share? Um, I actually 
threw up a post today on my blog um, with one of my favorite um, recent discoveries on YouTube, and it's called, let me look at it, it's called Socratica Studios, and right now, I actually just came across them recently because there is, they're making individual videos for each of the 50 states, and they go through all the history of the states, and it's very visual, they show the map, and it's it's really cool, and I'm like, this is so perfect for a homeschool setting, because typically you see how we all typically kind of go through each state at a time, going through the history of it and everything, and I thought that was so neat, and then after looking, kind of skimming through those videos to save them for later, they have the same visual effect for, um, like, math and science, too. Um, so that's one that I'm kind of, like, obsessing over right now and going through them and saving them to a playlist, like, oh, we got to watch this later. <laughs> Um, one of the ones that I really enjoy watching with my kids um, is the TED Talk channel um, because they just have a really wide range of videos, excellent speakers, and I guess because I homeschool I always feel I'm in this little bubble <laughs> and I think the TED Talks let me take a little look outside and see what the world is talking about and doing and able to just discuss my view with my kids about this topic or that topic and just because they cover such a wide range of topics we love, we really like TED Talks. Excellent. Heather, do you have any favorites that you'd like to share? I have one more actually. Um, nerdy, nerdy Nummies and it's not like it's that <laughs> educational but it's hysterical and my kids love that one too. It's just like this girl She's absolutely adorable, and she just makes all of these, like, Super Mario and Batman cupcakes, and my kids just eat that up. So, you know, teaches them about cooking in the kitchen, so there. Anywho. Heather, what you got? Well, I was just going to share, I cannot remember the um, exact name, but uh, there's a guy out of the UK who does um, videos on all the elements of the periodic table. And he's kind of an old mad scientist kind of guy, and things burn and things like that. So uh, we like to watch those. That sounds like a lot of fun. My kids would like that, I'm sure. Um, Jimmy, what do you have for us from the event room? Hey, Tony Anderson is out there, and she says, I love using technology in our homeschool, but feel like my kids are addicted to screen time. I think that's perfectly normal. All of our kids are. Any tips on using technology without kids ditching books and outside play? Um, I'll tackle that one um, first off. We, ugh, because my kids go back and forth, and we have a lot of devices here. Um, we have a tablet. Um, all the kids got DSs for Christmas. Um, you know, we have various uh, sundry smartphones and iPods and things that we're not using. My 18-month-old will dig out my iPad out of my bag and turn it. She brings it to me and hands it to me to undo the password. And then off she goes in a corner somewhere. And she's just, I mean, like it's hysterical. She's typing on the thing. Crazy. So what we do, limit screen time. Um, I use an old-fashioned timer. <laughs> you cannot play on the iPad or the, look Heather's held her timer up, you cannot play on the iPad or play Skylanders or the DS or whatever, whatever various sundry thing you want to do until your room is clean or if mom is doing homeschooling that day if I'm filling up to it, uh, after school is done. You know, we have, I mean, you, you, you got to get your chores, our, our mantra is you know, if you got if you want to play, you got to work first. I mean, that's kind of how we do as, as adults, or <laughs> we're supposed to do. So we use a timer, and I'll tell you, um, sometimes it works. And I'll be honest that sometimes we have knocked down, screaming, drag out, kick the wall, acting like an idiot fits. My son's gonna kill me one day for saying that on on TV. But I mean, that's just how it is. It seems like, and it seems like my boys are worse. I don't. I don't know if, if your boys are worse or not, but my, my boys are worse about the throw a screaming fit. Um, and I have identical twins, and it seemed like one, Thomas, was doing it more, and now he's kind of backed off, and now Adam's right in the middle of that now. I'm like, oh, come on. <laughs> Can I just get a break with this? But that's what we do. It's just, it's just a timer and just sticking um, 
being consistent with rules and I'll tell you that mom is more of a rule setter on the screen time than daddy is because uh, when I'm gone to work he needs to get some stuff done around the house so that's an easy babysitter sadly so I don't know anybody else well I can speak to um, you know when your kids get older and they might be doing a lot of different things with their screen time so I kind of try and differentiate between whether they're creating, writing, um, programming, doing something that is edifying versus pure entertainment. And um, even Minecraft, if you constantly say, okay, uh, you can have 30 minutes on that, then it's hard to get ahead if they're learning something and, and trying to put something together. So I try to keep track of what kind of time are they spending, and it can seem like a lot of time because it seems like our kids are really plugged in and I'll say that the boys are definitely more oriented to time on on devices than my daughter is we have three boys and one girl um, but she's a maker and so she um, will often go look for her videos to learn how to do something and I separate that time from pure entertainment time and so for entertainment time I have the old-fashioned timer the kind with the bell that's in your face and it also has um, a red thing so you can see your time going down and that helps my boys a lot and then I'm not crazy when the bell goes off they know it's time to wrap up and be done and and that's been really helpful um, rather than the digital timer it was not the same so uh, that's it gets um, muddy between what they're doing and what they're not I and mean, my 15 year old customizes his mini figures for Legos and he spends an awful lot of time drafting and so it's hard to determine what are you working on versus you know or, you know video game time is really the least of my worries actually <laughs> so. oh, that's a, I'm glad that you brought that up because that, that's a wonderful distinction because I'm think I'm listening to you and I'm thinking about applying that um, as an adult because okay I spend a lot of time online Am I messing around on Facebook and totally wasting time? Or am I working and writing a post? Am I scheduling social media? Am I, you know, it looks like to me, my husband works from home. He works on a computer all the time. I don't know what the heck he's doing. I mean, he could be, <laughs> he could be monkeying around on YouTube. I don't know. But he could be working. He could be making some sort of, um, I don't know, a real estate spreadsheet or something that, that I don't understand. But right, that that is a fantastic point that you brought up that absolutely there's, especially as they get older, and that's something I hadn't really thought about because I won't, I won't be so apt to, you know, tell me, you know, hand the iPad over if you're working on Starfall or, or whatever, you know, as opposed to, you're trying to finish the level of Angry Birds. Okay, it's time. It's time to hand it over. We're done. All right, that's a great. That's a great tip. Tip there, Heather. I like that one. Um, Marlene or Sade, anything else to share? Um, I I agree with Heather, and and I I think I may have taken her concept maybe to a little bit of the extreme. So I don't worry about their screen time really at all. We don't have. We had the we previously and when it broke about a year ago I refused to let my husband buy another one we have no video games we used to have a PlayStation that my husband bought before we had kids <laughs> so it's the PlayStation 2 or whatever and I, I, I didn't let him buy a new one we don't have the Xbox um, the kids don't have computer games on their on their laptops they're not allowed to go to game sites to play games I'm generally anti-game um, we had Angry Birds but it was on my phone and so when we were sitting somewhere in line, they could play Angry Birds on my phone when I handed it to them and said, I know you're bored, play Angry Birds. So really what I've done is gone and said, pushed entertainment as far back and away from us as I could. So what's available to the children is really mostly educational. Um, on Netflix, when we watch it on the TV, the ch now the younger children cannot go up to, they cannot touch a remote. <laughs> Only my oldest two children can touch a remote in this house. You are not allowed to touch it. You will be in trouble if you touch it. I mean, it's just, yeah, they can't do it. And my older two don't really like TV. So 
Netflix time is usually everyone sitting down and we all want to watch something or put something on so that they're being babysat by the TV, which I do do that <laughs> once in a while. But I'm babysitting them with Magic School Bus. So, you know, my conscience is kind of soothed there a little bit. And so to prevent the moment by moment, what are you doing on here? Or, you know, turn that off. And you could just take as much of that out of your um, environment as possible. And like you've done, uh, Diana, put the YouTube playlist on there and let them do that. Put Can Academy on the laptop and let them get on there, uh, like have the robotics kit in the house. I mean, the robotics, a robotics kit from Lego costs maybe $300 and you can get months of play out of it. Well, the Xbox, the new one costs 600 and something dollars. So, you know, <laughs> one will build your children up and, you know, the other one will entertain them and cost more. So I think if you just create that environment of learning around technology, you, we won't have as many, as many problems. Excellent. I think Jimmy had brought up a point, too, about um, self-police. Sometimes kids, self-policing is also an, an option for you know managing screen time, and I think that kind of depends on the age, the age of the child, and maturity le maturity level actually more than more than anything. Um, because you have some kids that one of my sons will stay on all day long, whereas like Rachel will take it or leave it. She she will take it kind of in spurts, you know, kind of go back and forth. I think you're right, Diana, but um, bottom line, if we're going to raise our kids, teenagers, to be adults, we cannot uh, be using timers when they're 17 years old. No. We have got to be training them to use their time wisely, and they need to make those decisions. And when they fail and they choose wrongly, as we do as adults, we pay the consequences. And so I think um, definitely it's a process. You're talking about three-year-old is a huge difference from a 14, 16-year-old. So, But getting to that goal of self-monitoring because if we don't you're really doing your kids a disservice so you have to teach them how to do that themselves and reduce the limits as they get older so just uh, another perspective but yeah I wanted to share Devin Dabney's yeah. comment um, by the way Devin Dabney is a homeschool dad I think he has maybe six kids now and he's a great person to follow on Google Plus Devin Dabney D-A-B-N-E-Y and he has a podcast too uh, that's really great all about homeschooling so I want everybody to look up Devin Dabney but he asks what do you find is the greatest digital distraction for you and your kids it's probably the same answer I think for both us and our kids <laughs> I'm laughing. Devin and I have been chatting a little bit. We're gonna actually going to bring him on um, on a Hangout pretty soon. I'm working on that. Um, biggest distraction for me is social media, period. <laughs> Done deal. <laughs> for my kids, um, I, I just think it's, uh, I'm trying to think. I just think it's like is it the iPad? Can I just say that? Because it's just I mean they because they do so many things on it, and they fight over it. So there's there's that distraction, and you know I'm not gonna I'm certainly not gonna buy you know four four iPads, you know to keep all of them happy. Um, so that's that's it for me. Social media for me and the kids. It's the iPad. Anybody else? Um, to be honest, I, I, it's my blogging. <laughs> That's why I left it in with the social media. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Social media is yeah. a huge distraction for me, too. I have 2,000 friends. This is not my page. This is my, my actual friends. Um, and I know probably five to 700 of these people that I have met at some point in my lifetime. And I've just decided I'm going to hang on to them and just love them. <laughs> so I'm on Facebook. And I always, every, every day, I want to get to where I stopped in my news feed. You know, so I never just look at the first few entries on my newsfeed on Facebook and then move on. I want to get to where I was last night so I make sure I didn't miss anything. What's that called? Um, the fear of missing out. I have the fear of missing out on social media. So that's the biggest distraction for me. Um, I don't count the time that I do spend scheduling things or blogging um, as a distraction. I think that's a good thing. I think it's my outlet for my creativity, so I like to... I like to do that. For my kids, there was a time when video games were a huge distraction. Even the, the cheap few video games that we had, not just at the time that they were playing the video games, 
but later. It seemed like when, my, when I told my son after playing a game for an hour, okay, now it's time to do this, whether it was dinner or the attitude that he came out of it with, it was just, I just felt like he was turning into a different person. So whatever happened after the games were played was never done well. It was never done with cheerfulness. It just would spill out into the whole day and ruin everything. So I found out that video games were just computer games. Video games were bad for us as a family. And while we still participate somewhat rarely, like Christmas Day, we will bring out the Just Dance or whatever. <laughs> it's really rare for us to play games now. Excellent. I was a. I liked hearing everybody's perspective on that one. Um, let me take a little bit of a different tack and um, talk real quick about um, some other thing, other ways we can use technology in our homeschool um, besides all of our streaming videos that we all love so much. Um, I know some of us have some experience with some, with some online courses, and I think. Marlene might have had some experience there. I know Jimmy has, and maybe Heather. Um, what about online classes? Because um, I'm the ones that come to mind quickly for me are things like, um, oh gosh, that went out, that went out of my brain. Um, Kerclick, um, and I, I think Marlene mentioned Switched on Schoolhouse. Um, I think that's what SOS is in my notes. Um, so, what, do you guys utilize those in your homeschool? Has it been helpful? Um, I'm pretty sure Jimmy uses them quite a bit too. So let me talk about that. I, I had sweet, I had signed up for some of the free classes on Kerclick and um, never got them out. Never really got around to doing any of them. They look like fun. We looked at like um, some Magic Treehouse um, classes, but I never, I never made it on the schedule. So um, talk to me about that. Yeah, we're big Kirkclick users. I love Kirkclick Online. They're here on Google Plus as well. You can find them. Um, my daughter right now just started yesterday a class with Lynn Schott of Founders Academy. She's taking her required economics half credit with Lynn, and I'm thrilled because, to be honest, it's not a topic I'm super interested in, but Lynn is very passionate about it, and so Founders Academy can teach Emma, this required course, and I don't really have to lift a finger except uh, sign up and pay, and I'm thrilled with it, and um, Emma seems to be interested in it, and um, the quality of the courses at Kerclick are pretty high as far as the technology and, of course, the expertise of the teachers, and I just love that I know she's getting good instruction and I don't have to do a thing. That sounds really lazy, doesn't it? That's the truth. <laughs> I don't think it sounds lazy for me. It's it, for me. It's an out. I, oh, my mic cut in or out. I don't think it sounds lazy for me. Um, it's an outlet, and I'm. I just, I took economics as an adult. I like going back to school for my never-ending bachelor's degree, um, and I took it at a community college. So here I was. Was I? I think I was almost thirty, and a lot of kids, a lot of the people in the class were straight out of high school. You know, eighteen, nineteen years old. Had no clue about living, you know, had them down on their own, et cetera, et cetera. And I thought economics was just like, wow. Not like I'm a math geek, because trust me, I am not. But econ is something that I think that everybody needs to take. I mean, I don't, I'm not particularly skilled in teaching it, but I feel like it's one of those light, that's a life lesson course. You need to know about supply and demand. And yeah, well, the state of Tennessee thinks so too. It's required for high school graduation. <laughs> So, so I went the online route to get that done. Well, I don't think that's lazy though. That's just letting someone. It's like it's like a co-op, which we'll talk about in a few weeks. There's another plug. Um, it's like letting somebody else. Like, okay, I'm not artistic. So what's Rachel doing? She's taking art at a studio. Okay, great. She's learning art. I don't have to stress about it or worry that I'm teaching something wrong or. Um, her make fun of me when my stick people look like bumblebees or something. I don't know. I can't draw worth two cents. So yeah, so it's not. It's playing to your strengths. You know, if my strength is creative writing, I'll teach creative writing. I'll let somebody else handle the science or the econ or any any of those things. All right, who else? Who else uses uh, online classes? Anybody? Um, well, I think our favorite was. Italki, 
We got introduced this summer through the IHN, and uh, Ethan has been taking Arabic lessons from a lady in Egypt, which has been a whole lot of fun. Um, so, and yeah, we've done Kerklick classes, we've done um, SA Rockstar uh, with Fortuagents, and um, those have all been um, neat little diversions for us um, that provide something extra for the kids. Excellent. Uh, Go ahead, Shadi. We've been using um, Khan Academy for maths really over the last six months just because we had um, the other six children move in with us and sitting down uh, to do math. Do just a, We've had to change how we homeschool, at least during this transitional period. So I said, okay, let's just use Khan Academy. They have what's called a math mission. It takes you from counting on the number line all the way to calculus and he has about 500 videos in between and questions and they'll you know there's a there's little videos you watch the videos you practice the questions and then you do a mastery test to see if you can get five questions in a row and then the computer says okay you pretty much you've got the gist of what this is about and so they've been doing that both of my kids have been doing that and there is a I, I put a little carrot at the end of that stick. I said, you complete all 400 of those and I'll give you $250. So, <laughs> and that's how I've taken care of math <laughs> for the last six months and they're doing it. I, I do have to tell them, okay, go go sit down and turn on Khan Academy. And that's kind of how I do math now is go do Khan Academy. You have an hour. Sit on there for an hour and do something. I don't care what you do. <laughs> Just get another mastery badge or whatever. So that's worked really well. Um, we have not done any other courses, but I do have friends who use teaching textbooks and they love it. Um, I've just heard such good things about that curriculum, but it's not something that we're doing at this time. Now, is Khan Academy free? I can't, I can't remember. Yes, it is. It okay, is I, free. You just need a computer that can play videos, and that's it. That's a great resource, too. Marlene, what about you? Anything else to share about online classes? Um, as far as online, we actually just recently signed up to test out Kerklick because um, I've heard so many awesome things about it, like we've heard here in the panel. Um, we're going to test out one of their online clubs just to kind of get a feel of it. And I think we might end up using um, a couple of their classes. My daughter will be hitting middle school next year. Um, she'll be hitting seventh grade next year. So I kind of want to see if there's something I can add on to like supplement her classes. Um, and then we've also done like computer-based classes, which aren't really technically online, which is a switch on Schoolhouse. We've done that before in past years. Um, they send you the CD, you put it on your computer and all that. But it's not online where there's a teacher on the other side of it. Um, um yeah, so that's basically it. <laughs> okay, that's where I was getting confused in my notes. I was like, I'm not sure what that's about, but okay, great. Jimmy's got some I know I saw that quote from, from Kelly to me. Yeah, Bring that Kelly one in. Asks, does Craftsy count? I guess that's craftsy.com. We're trying to use the free courses to see how we like it. I'm not really familiar with that, Diana, so I'm assuming it's crafts. Oh, it looks like Heather knows. Yes, I just, Craftsy I just is wonderful. Laugh. Yeah, I was going to say that too. Yeah, <laughs> Craftsy I use all the time. We have uh, my daughter is a maker, and I have bought her classes. We did a whole Civil War quilt last year based on a Craftsy class, and um, I can't speak highly enough about Craftsy. It is the best. Excellent. I've not seen. I've not actually taken a class. I get their email newsletter, and I think that I'm going to do all of these, you know, wonderful things, but never get around to it. And then we'll share. Uh, I know Jimmy's putting some of these links um, in the event room, and we'll share. I'll, I'll get my panel guests to go by and share some of their links to. Um, some of their favorite ideas for online classes or the computer-based classes, that sort of thing. Um, that way you guys you guys can all learn too. Um, Jimmy, we have any more comments or questions over there on the event page? I'm going back to my notes and I think we've just about got things wrapped up. I wanted to ask people um, um, around here in some of the public schools, smart boards are a huge thing and I don't think anybody uses smart boards um, in their homeschool classroom. Everybody's looking at me like, what are you talking about? Uh, <laughs> 
there are these like whiteboards that attach to the computer or a lap or a tablet or something, and you can like. I don't really know how they work, but there's some sort of technological technological something or another that looked kind of interesting. Jimmy's laughing at is me. It like, like a, is it like a marker board that you can plug <laughs> into your computer? I've seen those. <laughs> I've seen those. Because I was kind of wondering if anybody used them, because I see them on Craigslist occasionally and on eBay. I think they're um, pretty expensive, they're and very so expensive. for most homeschool families, it's a little bit out of the price range, and and it might be a little bit overkill. I mean, you don't right. need that, so you can make do with just a plain whiteboard or your computer or something. It's also would, very classroom oriented. I would mm, think it's yeah. for um, large, a a one teacher and lots of kids. That's an idea. I didn't think about that too. I didn't know if maybe I don't know if co-ops would use them or not. Probably not, because it would be too it would be too big. Okay, so we'll ditch we'll ditch the idea of smart of uh, smart boards. Um, what about um, now? We kind of touched a little bit on um, like digital cameras or video cameras. Do we have um, anybody that does that? Their kids shoot videos. Look at Heather's. Yes. Yeah, we and actually that touches on something that I wanted to mention is that with technology. One of the things you want to watch out for is always create a balance between what your children are consuming and what they're creating. Because really, they can be great with technology, but just know how to consume it. And as homeschoolers, because we're trying to teach them, the future is going to belong to people who know how to create technology. So things like I have a video camera, it's an HD Sony, and I encourage my children to video themselves or video things to take pictures um, with their phone, learn programming, dabble with HTML. They've both uh, blogged at various times off and on. They've created YouTube, YouTube videos. Yes, there are some privacy concerns with those things, but I feel like, you know, <laughs> in the end, their ability to create with technology is going to be way more important than their ability to consume. So things like the video cameras, all of those, I, I encourage them to use those things and make something. Uh, right now my, my son is learning how to, and now I don't know how to do this, but digitally master music, I don't know, mix music, <laughs> something. <laughs> well, whatever that is. And you know, So he's creating rap music. I, that just blew me away when he said he wanted to do rap, but okay, fine, whatever. <laughs> but he's creating something, so I figure it's a good thing. He's, he's sitting down, he's learning, he's making something, whatever it is, he's creating, and that makes me happy. I was going to say, we uh, have the kids doing any number of things with um, digital cameras and video cameras. My eight-year-old just uh, has a little underwater camera that he likes to take video with. His um, most recent escapade was catching both the Tooth Fairy and Santa um, on film. And uh, film, did you hear that? <laughs> so he's basically doing all that. And he has, my eight-year-old is um, just a force to be contented with. He's learned C++ and he announced one day, I'm done with this. I want to learn Java. And so He's been learning Java and trying out things, and those are the things that he needs time for, is just to be a producer, to figure it out. He wants to engineer it, and there's no stopping him on that. Um, you got to ride the wave with him, and I agree with Jimmy um, completely about, you know, the timer that I use for my kids, for my younger kids. It's not for my 15-year-old. If there's anything that I need to do with him between now and the time he leaves home is to help him to learn to manage that time, because if he can't, um, I'm not sure what's going to happen because I can't imagine what my life would have been like in college if I had had um, anything that I have access to online and I'm supposed to be studying. <laughs> um, I, it's just for me that is a huge weight on my shoulders right now is to teach them how to manage it well just from closing out windows. If I have a writing deadline and I have like four right now today, now, <laughs> you know, I'm going to have to like close out every single window and my email and just do that plan neglect for just a little while and I think it's important to teach our kids that and so the older they get the less I limit but the more I want to see them produce um, and the more I want to see them do so my kids do have blogs and I'll share those links with you because they um, have huge projects that they're doing with them 
and um, it's just kind of a home base for them to to do a whole bunch of different kinds of technology in one spot. Um, but that's how we kind of handle it. I think those are absolutely wonderful points from both of you guys that I that I actually didn't even think about. It never occurred to me. Um, Right, the consumption end versus the the what are you doing with that knowledge and that that tech savvy that tech savvy base that you're that you're creating. All right, wonderful. Um, I think we have touched on everything that we had in our notes, and I think we've handled most of our questions over in the event panel. This has been um, yet again another very fun hangout, and I always love to chat with my girls because I learned so much. I get to meet fun people from all around the country. Um, I'll give a I'll give a heads up uh, just for those of you all that don't that don't know some of us. Uh, Jimmy and I are the Southern girls. I'm in Kentucky. Jimmy's in Tennessee. Marlene is um, transplanted up north in Wisconsin. Yes, but she's really from Texas, so she wants to go back down south again. Sade's over in St. Louis and I think I will go visit her one day because there's loads of things to do in St. Louis. And Heather's up way up north in New York um, where it's cold I'm sure. Cold and cold and snowy probably up there for you. So anyway, we're just kind of all over. So it's a blast for me. I get, like I said, I get to talk to girls all around the country, meet people over in the event room and it's just so much fun. Um, so this is the way that we connect with homeschool families um, all over the world. I know that we have folks on the other side of the globe too that will be watching later on tonight. Tonight for us in the morning for them. So once again, um, I will encourage you all to check us out. We're, like I said, we're here each and every Thursday. And you can follow us by looking, I'm sorry, by circling us on Google+. Plus. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel. And you can find us on iTunes and also in Stitcher if you're an Android user. You're going to go to ihomeschoolnetwork.com slash hangouts and you can find links there to previous hangouts and some future topics. We're going to be talking about um, co-ops coming up in the next few weeks. Also, I'm very excited. Uh, we'll be talking about involving dads in our homeschool. February brings us um, to art. And a few other topics I can't remember off the top of my head right now, but I know I know art's on the list. So I'll be watching that one intently because I don't have no no art skills. Um, but thank you once again to my friends on the panel and to you guys over in the event room. I want to remind you to check out Heather Whitty at blogshewrote.org. Jimmy Landley is all over the internet, but you can find her easiest at jimmylanley.com, also at Jimmy's Collage. Marlene Griffith is at adiligentheart.com and Shade Tagbo is at shadetagbo.com, correct? And then I am Diana Kennedy at thekennedyadventures.com. Loved having you guys with us today. Thank you so much for spending your afternoon with us. Have a good afternoon. Bye-bye.